<laughs> going live. I'm live. Hello, hello. It's been a while since I've done this, so forgive me if I am a little out of sorts. This is spontaneous uh, just because I'm home and I've been stuck home. Uh, it's been kind of snowy up here in upstate New York, and I came across something tonight, and I just kind of was excited, and I want to share it. And so I just figured, heck, I'm just going to go live. So now you see this, there's a little stack of books behind me there. Those are a bunch of notebooks and sketchbooks and stuff. Uh, most of those are from probably the late 1990s to the early 2000s. I probably have, I'm not joking, 10 or 15 times that. That's just from a small section. And I found this one uh in that stack as i was going through some stuff today and i came across notes from a uh, conversation i had with kathleen kennedy and frank marshall and so for those of you who don't know kathleen kennedy is now head of lucasfilm for disney and frank marshall is producer extraordinaire they both were partners with spielberg and amblin entertainment and I think they still, I'm sure, all work together. And uh, Frank produced uh, Indiana Jones, and Kathy and Frank produced Born Identity and uh, Six Sense. And I worked for them for a little bit. And I did a movie with them. It was the first thing I worked on uh, when I got out of college. And it was an, an IMAX film called Olympic Glory. And so here's a, I found this, I found a picture of me and Frank on the set of Olympic Glory. This was out in Colorado Springs. Uh, we were making that look like Kenya. And so when the movie premiered, I was actually interning at that point for, I think the Olympic Committee, if it wasn't for, um, if it wasn't for the Kennedy Marshall Company, I kind of did both. And so we had this premiere of the movie and for those of you who don't know, I'm also a painter, and I did this giant painting of Peekaboo Street. Oh, here, I think I got a picture of me with Peekaboo Street. Now, this is the one thing. I'm a little annoyed. I, I looked for about an hour to try to find a picture of the painting. Here's me and Peekaboo Street. On I looked for a copy of the painting, and I could not find a copy of the painting, uh, but it was massive, and they auctioned it off as part of uh, raise money for the, uh, Olympic committee. I think it was six foot by eight foot or four foot by eight foot, six foot. I, I it, it was huge. And he auctioned it off. And for what I remember, uh, the guy who took it never paid for it. So it's out there somewhere, <laughs> but, um, so we had this big premiere and, uh, I think it was the first time I met Kathleen Kennedy who is Frank's wife. And here's a picture from the premiere. And that's Kathy, and that's Frank, and that's Peekaboo Street, and that's the director, Academy Award-winning uh, Keith Merrill, that's his wife, and me, like Forrest Gump, kind of sneaking in the picture. Now, behind is the painting of Peekaboo Street. We're blocking it. All right, so uh, it was huge, and she signed it. Uh, I will find a picture of it someday. But um, anyway, then we went to dinner afterwards, and I had a crazy great conversation, mostly with Kathleen Kennedy. And I, soon as I left, soon as they left, I grabbed my notebook, which I always keep on me, and I wrote about it. So I thought, because I learned a lot, what did I knock over? I learned a lot uh, that night, and it was, it was just super interesting. I thought I would share it and read it off to you guys. I just kind of perused it earlier, and I'm going to read it to you now, <laughs> if you guys are interested. Dessert with Kathy and Frank. I guess it wasn't dinner. I guess it was just dessert. Um, oh, so we're talking about the painting. And Kathleen Kennedy looked at me and said, you paint the music, don't you? Uh, I was shocked. I tried to explain over and over in the past to my family, friends, the importance of music in my painting. I think that they all thought I was full of it. And Kathy surprised me by being the only one to ever pick up on that. Now, that is, I'm reading it to you. Hi, Marsha. Thanks for joining. Um, so this is, is, so I, I, and here's the thing. So I did paint the music in those days and, you know, really aggressive <laughs> music, a lot, a lot of Billy Joel, I think. And, uh, I don't do music as much anymore, but it's funny that she picked up on that and nobody has since 
nobody before her or after her has ever brought that up to me, has ever asked me that question. So I thought that was really interesting. It was the first thing she kind of said to me at dessert. Um, and let's see, uh, we talked about painting, we talked about music, and how I did the peekaboo painting in nine hours. Uh, she looked if I, she asked if I had any training and said, no, I'm going to get the film stuff. She gets the film stuff. Um, she advised me to get some training <laughs> and told me to keep working at it and I can make a good living doing it. But I want to make films, I said. And, uh, but she must hear that every day. Uh, I went on anyway about how my painting has influenced my filmmaking and vice versa, composition, style, color, etc. Um, and so I said, well, let me ask you this. How would you break into films today? Um, why would I do it any differently? I started, oh, I said, oh, okay. I don't know, maybe I, I said, how would you break into films today? She said, why would I do it any differently? I started with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and I said, who? Just kidding. Um, I said, no, that's not what I meant. Uh, if you had to start all over today, how would you do it? And I'm not really sure she understood the question. But uh, I enjoyed going through this ride. She told me how she began. She was going to school for nursing, uh, took a broadcasting elective. Had, my handwriting is very messy, by the way. Uh, had always made little movies at home and always enjoyed it. Began in the local news station doing everything from videotaping, football games. Uh, her roommate moved to L.A. Uh, Kathy went out to visit. She took her mother to see Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which is Steven Spielberg movie. She told her mom when she saw the credits, that's what I want to be, one of those people. Uh, she said her first film was 1941 for Spielberg. Uh, she lied to get in. I hope, Kathy, if you're watching this, I hope I'm not <laughs> spoiling any uh, any secrets here. Um, uh, she had no TV experience, but uh, she, uh, for a reason, let's see, uh, I'm trying to understand what I said. She had to lie to get in. No TV experience, she said. Uh, for a reason that she never disclosed or now escapes me, she started getting coffee. No! I put this on Do Not Disturb. Um, where was I? She began to work for John Milius. Uh, if you guys don't know Milius, look him up. Very famous filmmaker. Uh, Milius and Spielberg were talking one day, and Stephen said... He needed help getting his notes put together, and Milius suggested Kathy. Um, the let's see, the, oh, she said, you know, at that point the man had directed Jaws, Close Encounters, but he was still considered a kid. And I was like, but he directed, and she said, you're bringing too much baggage. It's very different today. Um, and <laughs> then she said, she said, shut up and listen, <laughs> or she was saying, shut up and listen, maybe. Uh, uh, she said, she continued, I had never been to Beverly Hills um, or even a house with a gate. So here I go. I walk in and Stephen had all these papers all over, bits of napkins with little things written, drawn all over the place. He said, can you make sense of this? I said, sure. I took it home and I spent all weekend typing the notes, uh, redrawing the drawings. I was determined to impress him. I went in with it Monday morning and wowed him. So that is Kathy Stark. She basically just worked her butt off. Um, but what happened was, and to this day, I'm convinced this is what got me the job. Stephen was in my office talking with me when Milius screamed from down the hall, Kathy, get me Hillary. He used to have all the girls that he would call on a moment's notice. Um, and she goes, I immediately opened my Rolodex to a file that said, girls. And I had written all the girls' names and numbers <laughs> on index cards. And Spielberg was impressed. How do you keep it all straight, he said. Uh, she showed him the index cards. And the rest is history. That's it. The rest is history. Uh, I guess her little index card system. She was organized. She had something he needed. Um, I should have saved that for later because it didn't quite happen like that. I never really brought up movies, only hinted at it. I never brought up Steven, but we talked about him a lot. The simple change from, oh boy, I don't know what this means. The simple change from something to film actually happened like this. You know, not to be a name dropper, but when we were working with Kurosawa on, you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm completely lost here what happened in the, if this is her saying this or this is me saying this. 
um, not to be a name dropper, but when we were working with Kurosawa on Dream, uh, so, okay, uh, that's obviously her saying that. Uh, yes, he made all these storyboards that were hand-painted. They were beautiful, these hand-painted uh, beautiful colors. I still have a stack of them. So since I, I uh, yeah, River, it is, it, I still remember this day. I remember so much of this moment. Um, here's, I got some some of the storyboards, uh, samples of Kurosawa storyboards that she was talking about. He would hand paint these colored storyboards is what he wanted to do. This is actually from the movie uh, that she was talking about, um, Dreams. This is the Vincent Van Gogh uh, section of the movie. Uh, let's see. Oh, coincidentally, I just bought the book, uh, and here's a here's an Industrial Light Magic book that's also got. She talks about this one. It's also got uh, um, a volcano in it. Uh, it happened to be going through that. I was going through the book. Blah blah blah. There was uh, so on the six out of volcano. She got. Oh, I said. Oh, I said. I told her. I said. I just got done. I just bought a, a book. Industrial Light and Magic book, and I just saw that, and one sticks out, and it is the volcano. She got real excited. Yes, they were beautiful, and he had these cherry blossom in all his films. These cherry blossoms would always fall from the sky. It was beautiful. Uh, apparently, they're very symbolic in his country. My head was spinning, I say. Uh, somehow, we got on the subject of David Lean. Now, David Lean is one of my all-time favorite directors Lawrence Arabia is probably my favorite film um and I asked her about David Lean and she said he was wonderful to work with but what was funny is how he intimidated Stephen and I was like really no way and she's like took uh she interrupted let's oh we got interrupted stupid waitress came and interrupted us in the middle of it it was I said it was like an endless 30 seconds um I had her and I had to get Kathy's attention back after the waitress uh showed up. Um, that must have been weird to see Spielberg intimidating, intimidated by someone, I said. Not really. See, uh, you bring with you so much baggage, she said. And uh, I said, I never really understood what that, didn't really understand what that meant. I kind of get it now. I feel like David Lean, if he had met Chaplin, which I'm sure he must have, just must have been in awe. I mean, so of course Spielberg's in awe of uh, David Lean, just like I'm sure J.J. Abrams still goes into Spielberg's office is like, this is, this is Steven Spielberg. Um, so I said, now for the lesson. Uh, I said, what uh, what would be Steven's advice to young filmmakers? And uh, she said, his lesson would be, if you're not going to storyboard everything, don't tell anyone what you're doing. Okay. Why? Well, a lot is done on instinct, a lot more than you would think. I want that wall orange. Well, you might know why. You might not know why you want that wall orange. You just do it. And I said, well, why not tell? She said, because they'll second guess you. So I think that is the lesson of this. Uh, but the moral of the story goes back to Steve Milius' story. And the Steve Milius story. And this is where Frank Marshall chimed in. Um and I was literally having a discussion with both of them. Like, I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Kathy, if you're giving something to do, do it well. If you give me something to do, if I give you something to do, do it well. And Frank says, whether it's getting coffee or making photocopies, it's going to show that you care. If you're going to do something, do it right. You steal little, you steal big. If you get the cup of coffee with enthusiasm and with, you know, uh, you take it as seriously as if you're directing the film, then it shows. Uh, so that's it. Advice from the big guns. Um, and then Frank went on to talk about my friend Beth Howard, who has since passed away. She was an incredible producer and helped get me where I am today. And that's what he was talking about her. Uh, that's what makes her uh, uh, a good right-hand person. She's like... Kathy to Stephen. Uh, everyone has a right hand person. Um, I have Mary, uh, Frank said, and uh, that's it. That's it. It just ends. So I don't know. I wanted to share that 
dinner with there, that dessert with you. Uh, <laughs> it might not seem like a big deal, but boy, as a little kid or early twenties or whatever I was, it was absolutely incredible and thrilling. And I'm glad I kept it and write a lot, just like I did. Be prolific. Uh, share with me any uh, any uh, lessons you've learned from anybody. And thanks for coming by. Don't forget to subscribe, like other videos, check out other things on the channel, and I'll be back soon. Do -do 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 -do. Goodbye.